Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monoblock. Uh, this will be the first in the series about this area studio track 4 R504. And we'll begin by getting access to the case and the guts inside. So this upper case is held on with three screws. The screws are wired ferrule, which is slightly unusual from my point of view because when I'm opening up Tascams and so on, then anytime you see a wired ferrule screw, it indicates that the screw is going into a plastic mounting post or some other plastic part. This is metal to metal, but this manufacturer has chosen to machine the metal for use with wide ferrule screws. They're a little bit particular. Um, I've got like loads of wide ferrule screws. You know, these are all spare screws from various machines that I have disassembled. And I had to go through a few screws to find ones that would fit in that hole. So I, the ones that fit looked very, very slightly narrower. So yeah, if you're taking these out, don't just throw them in willy-nilly with um, all the other wide ferrule screws you've got. One of the simplest service maintenance repair tasks you can do with a multi-track cassette recorder is change the belts. A sensible design decision would be to put the mounting screws that attach this cassette transport to this missile chassis screw head facing from this direction so I could access it without removing this big metal plate in the front. Uh, that's not what the manufacturer has decided to do. So unfortunately we are going to need to remove this metal plate. I say unfortunately because um, as you'll see it's pretty awkward to put back on. And that's in addition to the nuisance of having to remove all the knobs and uh, four bolts just in order to be able to change a belt. All these push push buttons, the caps can be left. There's nothing to be done with these switches but all these rotary knobs we need to remove those and uh, they're just going to pull off from the front then there are four bolts where i'm pointing with my screwdriver one in this corner one in this corner one in this corner and one in this corner we'll come back once those have been removed so we've got these bolts with a domed cap i guess they're about three centimeters long but honestly you're not going to get them mixed up with anything else in the unit um, but they're narrow ferrule in contrast to the wide ferrule screws that you took from the top now if i slide this forward um we can see that there are brass spacers um i'll insert some footage that i've already shot into this edit explaining why we've got this double-sided tape here other thing i will say about these brass spacers is when i received this unit this plate was off and uh, these spacers were loose so if you've got a unit that has never been worked with then these spacers may be in a different place by the width of them i am confident that they are intended to go here because there's a, another little screw with a spacer on the far side there um, and that's designed to keep that metal plate with all the user interface text on it a certain space away from this chassis. Um, I did experiment with using these brass spacers on this plastic door that screws onto the front of the cassette transport and they were too wide. I do have spacers in here but they're actually a little bit too narrow so with the face on this wasn't opening and closing properly. It, again this was removed from the cassette player when I received it so I think whoever took this off has misplaced the original spacers. So it's just a matter of me finding the correct size of spacers to go between this sort of thumb screw and the screw hole on the cassette transport. Um, but for now, if I just unscrew these, they've got a serrated edge so you can just do it with your thumb. You can see I've got little plastic spacers in there. They're just, these ones are slightly too short. But presumably if you're taking apart an original one, then the spacers that are in there are going to be of the right width. Replacing the front place on this has proven to be very tricky. And um, I've made enough missteps with it that I've damaged this LED. Can you see the crack at the base of this one and then this one? I mean, it's still okay, but hopefully you can see that the leads coming out of it are kind of mangled in a way that this one isn't. 
the reason that I've had those problems is that as well as you have to get all these switches and pots lined up with the holes on it, they're brass spacers in all four corners, they're kind of falling off the screws while you're trying to get all these things lined up. So the compromise I'm, I've come to is to remove the cap from that power switch. That makes it a little bit easier to line up the holes with the LEDs. Then on the plate itself, I've got little bits of double-sided tape beside the holes. I'll film again in a minute, but once I've put the screw through, I'm going to use masking tape on the far side to keep that screw in. I'll peel the non-adhesive layer of this, put the brass spacer down so that the screws held from the cap side and the brass spacers stuck to this double-sided tape. And hopefully they're not going to move around too much. It means I can get these lined up more easily. Here's what I mean. Masking tape over this side. The brass spacer is held in place by this double-sided tape. So that's not going to wiggle around too much. And in the case of these uh, smaller brass spacers at the top, just having a little bit of carpet to floor double sided tape below it isn't really going to hold them in place. So I've taken a small strip of it, rolled it up and wrapped it around the brass spacer this way. If I remove the uh, masking tape that's holding the bolt screw, whatever you want to call that, in from the front, then this brass spacer isn't going anywhere. I'm trying to line this up and then the best way is to come at the front here and get sorry <laughs> holding the camera with one hand whilst doing this obviously isn't ideal at the point where you can more or less see the LEDs for the space and then if they're a little bit out of alignment then you can fit into this space give them a bit of a prod with a pair of tweezers I mean I'm shooting this out of sequence I'm shooting this clip before I've shot my tear down. I've already been in here and done a bit of investigating. But at some later stage I'm going to have to desolder that. I do have a spare here. I've got a board from a junk Task Importer 1 so you can see it's got um, a compatible LED there. I mean a better design choice in my view would have been to make this a socket rather than a soldered connection and then have some sort of plastic spacer on the leads to make sure that that was straight. I mean, it wouldn't matter so much if this plate didn't need to come off, really, but the fact that you have to remove this plate in order to get the transport out, in order to change the belts, which is like, you know, the most simple of service or repair tasks. Not a great design choice. I mean, you know, it, it's well built, but there's an aspect of design where I think the designers need to consider what the service person needs to go through in order to repair a unit. So um, in that respect, this unit does not score well. Um, also, although everything's very clean, nicely laid out in here, there's absolutely no annotations on this side of the board. So again, that's not very helpful. It looks like it's well made enough that it's not going to break down very easily or very often, but when it does, whoever's fixing it's not going to have an especially easy time.